Hey guys, in this video, let us see how to call a stored procedure from a Spring Boot application. The stored procedure can be called in four different ways from a Spring Boot application. Number one, you can map the procedure name as the method name and annotate it with add procedure. Number two, give a different method name in your repository interface, annotate it with that procedure annotation, add attributes to pass the original procedure name. Number three, using at named stored procedure query annotation in the entity class. This is similar to that of at named query annotation. Number four, using at query annotation. In this case, we will be working with the native query. That is, we will be calling the stored procedure just like how we call it from any database. For this example, I am using Spring Boot version 3.2.2, Java version 17, MySQL version 8. For this application, I have already created two stored procedures in my MySQL database. Let me open it. This is the MySQL workbench. These are the two procedures. The first procedure name is get books by author. It takes an input as author. The purpose of this procedure is to return a list of books by a particular author. The second procedure is get count of books. It takes an input as author and returns an output as total. The purpose of this stored procedure is to return me the count of books returned by a particular author. The out value of this procedure is total. Let us try running the stored procedure from the SQL editor. The database that I am using is training. Select start from book. These are the rows in my book table. To call the stored procedure, the syntax is called procedure name. Pass the author name. Let me give the author name as Robin. Let me execute this now. Here I have got two books written by the author Robin. Let us try running the next stored procedure. Get count of books. Get count of books by a particular author. To retrieve the values in a table, let me add a total variable. Execute it. This is executed. The next line, select a total. Here we have got the output. Now, we will be calling these two stored procedures from our Spring Boot application. Let me open STS. Here, I have already created an application. The domain model that I am using is book. This is my pom.xml. You can notice over here, the Spring Boot version is 3.2.2, Java version is 17. The two dependencies that I have added are Spring Boot Starter Data JPA and MySQL Driver. Together with that, I am also having a model class. The class name is book. Book is annotated with entity. All these annotations are now from Jakarta.persistence package. Together with this, I have also created the service package and repository package. In the service package, I have iBook service. I have not added any methods. This is the implementation class and this is my iBook repository. Let us get started from the book repository. From this repository, we are going to call the stored procedure. The first way to call the stored procedure is to map the procedure name as the method name. In our case, we have the procedure name as get count of books. This will be the method name in the repository interface. It takes an input as author and the return type is an int value. This should be annotated with at procedure annotation. Use procedure name as the method name. This is the first way. Now in the next way, you can give any method name. Let me give the method name as get book count. It takes string author as parameter. The return type is int. This method also will be annotated with that procedure annotation. But we need to pass the procedure name as a value to the attribute of this at procedure annotation. So the attribute that we are going to use is procedure name. Now pass your procedure name. So this is the original procedure name. We are assigning it as a value to the attribute. The attribute name is procedure name. You can also use value as an attribute. 
that is you can either use procedure name or value attribute and assign the original procedure name as value so this is the second way the next way is using named stored procedure query annotation so for this let us go to the entity class annotate the entity class with at named stored procedure query it takes few attributes let us add the attributes one by one name is equal to this is the name of this particular named query let me give the name as get book count by author when you want to call the stored procedure you need to call with this particular name only comma the next attribute is procedure name here you need to pass the original procedure name let me copy it from here get count of books comma the next attribute is parameters every stored procedure has its own set of parameters the parameters type can be input or output so this attribute is used to provide all the details about the parameters in the stored procedure you can notice over here it is giving the details information about all parameters of the stored procedure the value of this parameters is an array of stored procedure parameter which is an annotation at stored procedure parameter this also takes few attributes within the attributes we will be providing the details about our parameters of the stored procedure in our case in this particular stored procedure we are having two parameters so we need to pass two at stored procedure parameter within which you need to specify what is the mode parameter mode dot in just to tell whether it is an input parameter or output parameter what is the name of the parameter in our case the name of the parameter is auth that is the author and the type the data type is string so it should be string dot class we will add the details for the next parameter at stored procedure parameter mode is equal to parameter mode dot out name equal to total type equal to integer dot class now our named stored procedure query is ready we can call this from our repository interface let me just copy the name let us give any method name get count by author string author as parameter the return type is int and this should be annotated with at procedure annotation now pass the attribute in this case the attribute name should be name itself here we need to pass the name of our named stored procedure query okay since we are taking an input for the stored procedure the variable name that is expected by the stored procedure should be provided in at param annotation at param within quotes pass auth this is the variable name that is provided as input for the stored procedure okay the next one is using at query annotation when you are using at query annotation If this can work only with stored procedures that are taking input and no output because with query annotation you cannot retrieve the result from the stored procedure explicitly using the out variable in our case we have created two stored procedures so this time for this at query annotation let us use the other stored procedure the stored procedure name is get books by author let us give a name for our method get book list by author within parameter pass string author the return type is going to be a list of books annotated with at query annotation it takes two attributes one is value within which you will be calling the stored procedure comma native query equal to true because you are going to call the stored procedure just like how you call it from your my sql workbench within which you pass called get books by author colon author this is the input that is expected by the stored procedure this input variable name this input variable name should be passed within at param annotation this is the input expected okay 
So now we have added all the methods in our book repository. We need the equivalent methods in iBook service. Let me open iBook service. We will add the methods one by one. The first method is get count of books. I will remove the underscore and convert it into camel case. The second method is int get book count. The third method is get count by author. The fourth method is get book list by author. In both these cases, we have added at param annotation. We don't need it here. Let me remove this. I will remove the unwanted imports also. Now let us implement it in book service IMP. Let me open it. Add unimplemented methods. Autowire iBook repository. Let me use setter base above which let me add at autowired annotation here. Okay. Now let us call the methods one by one using book repository variable. Book repository dot get count of books by passing author. Book repository dot get book count by passing author. The third one book repository dot get count by author by passing the author. In this particular method. We are calling a name to query from the entity class. So this has to be within a transaction. For this purpose, let us annotate this method alone using a transactional. In the other cases, all the methods are direct. That is, we are creating custom queries. But in this case, we are trying to refer to a query which is in the entity class. So it is within a transaction. For that purpose, add a transactional annotation. For the last method, book repository dot get book list by author by passing author. Okay, this is a console based application. So let us go to the main class, implement command line runner and override run method. Keep the cursor in the class. Add unimplemented methods. Now we need to auto wire iBook service. At auto wire. Now let us call the methods one by one. Book service dot count of books by passing the author let me give the author name as robin the return type is an int value in total is equal to so total similar to this let me call the other three methods also the next method is get book count by passing author name get count by author so this is the named query one the last one is going to return me a list of books. List of book books is equal to book service dot get book list by author by passing the author. I'm using the same author name. This is a list. So let us use for each to iterate and print it. Books dot for each. It uses consumer. So let me use method references. All set now in the coding part. Let us check application dot properties for the database configuration. The database name is training. DDL auto is update. Here I am using MySQL 8. Now let us run the application. Select here file, right click, run as Spring Boot app. Click OK. Let me maximize the console. OK. This is giving me a linkage error. The reason being, Till now, I was working with Java version 11. So Spring Tool Suit is not recognizing the Java version 17, which has to be added to the JRE system library. So for this purpose, select your project, right click, build path, configure build path, select JRE system library, edit, alternate JRE, go to install JREs. I have added the JDK 17. So let me select it, apply. If you have not done this, you will have to add it explicitly. How? Click add, standard VM, click next. Now here you need to add the path of your JDK. I have already done it, so it is showing me JDK 17. Now I have selected JDK 17. Apply and close. Click finish. Apply and close. Now run it. Now the application has started successfully. It's giving me an error. com.bookcap.model has no identifier. I had a tidy annotation. Let me check it out. 
go to the book class the problem of copy pasting i have copied this application from one other application where i have used the database as mongodb i have changed in other places where i have given string i forgot to change in this particular place i have changed this to integer all the annotation should be imported from jakarta dot persistence package earlier this id was from a different package i have changed that also now let me rerun the application let me maximize the console now here i have got the output let me open book repository this is the final output in the first case we are calling with the procedure name directly in the second case we are passing the procedure name as value for the attribute in the third case we are using named stored procedure query remember when you are using named stored procedure query you need to use a transactional annotation in the service layer in the last case we are calling the stored procedure directly just like how we call in the database because in this case it is a native query so this is how you call a stored procedure from a spring boot application